Okay guys, so in the last video we um, we set this up so that we could uh, collect these resources and you can see in the top left of the play screen that they are storing uh, like a value. Okay, so what we're going to move on to now is setting up um, a way of using these resources um, to actually do something um, and actually have that visually appearing on like a kind of an inv inventory bar. So that's the idea. Um, so what I've done, um, you can see over here, is I've set up a little like random fire which causes damage over time. Um, I've done a video where I set that up. So you see damage here, I've got this damage area um, which causes damage over time, which I've done in a previous video. So if you want to set up something like that, I'll link that in the description. But um, I'm not going to go through that in this video. Um, so let's get started with what we are here for. So I'm going to go to my main content folder. I'm going to create a new folder, keep things organized. I'm going to call it um, inventory. I know it's not like a traditional um, inventory system, but it's more like an inventory bar. Um, so we're going to here and that is going to be a user interface. So we need a widget blueprint, user widget, and I'll call it inventory or something I'll do. So I'm going to open this up and I need this to have a canvas to start off with. Still don't know why that's not there by default in Unreal 5. Um, and then I'm going to kind of set up my images. Um, so what shall I do them as? I'm going to kind of add in like a border maybe. Uh, kind of like a bar for them to go on. I'm not going to make this look particularly exciting, but that's for you guys to um, to do. <laughs> I'm going to add, I'm going to do it as a button, um, the images. You can just do it as an image. I'm going to use a button because you know, if you are developing for mobile or something, then you might want them to be buttons. So anyway, somewhere like that will be fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in an image. So I need to import these images. So um, import to game to my desktop. What I did is I've got these little icons here. So if I download all three of those, or import them, I should say, go back to my inventory. If I go to image over here, then I can add in, there we go, this herbs one as an image. Okay. Um, it's nothing special, but I thought I would show you actually, there's a website here, this one, game-icons.net. If you've never heard of this um, website before, I thought I might as well take the opportunity to show you because it's a really good one, just it's completely free icons, um, absolutely loads and loads and loads of things that you can, you can get for, you can search here. I think I just searched for like herbs or something um, and there's different things that you can get. Um, and you can download as um, an SVG or a PNG. So I just downloaded the PNG, for example, took it into like Photoshop, chucked on some like blending options, um, made it look uh, unique. Um, obviously, you could spend a lot more time editing them, but they're, they're a good kind of starting point for, for icons, for games, for free. So I thought I'd show you those. Anyway, so there we've got our image. Um, and just the image on its own isn't going to do much. So we need some text. So I'm going to drag in some text as well. The text, I just want to be a zero to start off with. Um, making it white isn't going to be much good. So I'll make it kind of orangey. And let's give it a an outline around it. Maybe not two, one. And stick it kind of in the corner there. Something like that, OK? Um, what you also will want is something to show the user what button they need to press to use that item. So I'm going to do mine in numbers. So we'll just call that number one. Or is numbers going to be confusing? Um, we'll call it Q, shall we? I'm just making this up as I go along right now, but you could maybe um, put more thought into that. But so color 
something different. It's a nice pink. With an outline on again, maybe slightly smaller in size. Okay. Let's map that corner. So it tells you like the user what buttons push and how many there are. That should be fairly intuitive. Again, the design of this can you can adapt to whatever you want. So compile that um, and minimize this. So I just want to set this up so that when I play my game, I can see my inventory. Uh, before I do that, I just forgot to anchor these. Let's anchor everything to the top center. Otherwise, that's going to go all funky and be all out of place on the screen. OK, so what I need to do, because if I play my game now, I'm not going to see my HUD at all. So if I go to up here and go to the level blueprint, I'm going to go to event, begin play. You could have this set up by a key that you could push to open this inventory, but I just want it to be there all the time. So begin play, um, create widget, uh, the inventory HUD, and then add to viewport. And that should be all. Minimize that, push play. And now you can see when I run around, I have this HUD at the top of my screen. Um, it says one, you know, push Q, and I've got the, the number of how many herbs I've got. So, but when I pick things up at the moment, that's not linked, so that's not going to work just yet. So we can do that next. Back to my inventory, click on this guy here. This text is what we want to change. So I'm going to go to the text section, okay, and you've got a drop down that says bind. Don't get confused with the color and opacity one. It's the text one that we want to change. So click bind and then uh, create binding. Okay, so we're just going to bind that text to the, um, I think we called it mint <laughs> um, integer that we created in the last video. So that is, where's that stored? Good question. <laughs> just remind myself where that's stored. I'm guessing the first person character. Yeah, there's the um, the uh, the variable that we want to link that to. So that's what I need to cast to. Cast to first person character. Object is get <clears throat> player character, and then we want to get mint. Okay. And then hook that up to the return value, and it will automatically bring up this thing to change it into a text. Compile that. All right, let's play again. So it still says zero. I can come over here, uh, push E to pick up my items, and notice now how that in my inventory bar, you know, now I have three. Three herbs, mints, whatever you want to refer to them as. Um, and they want to give me health, right? So next I need something that shows what my health actually is. So in my character, this is what I already did because I set up this health already. So I created a float variable there called health. Again, I'll, I'll do that link to this proper video. Um, but um, essentially, uh, what's it, that? I don't want. <laughs> uh, essentially, what I've got is this: uh, every frame is going to check that this pain uh, boolean that I created is true, and if it is, every two seconds, it's going to um, take away 0.1 health from my health variable, which is set to one. Okay, and then I'll just quickly again show you. I've got this damage area which is literally just a collision box, which says when you begin overlapping it, set pain to true, and when you end, set pain to false. All right, so that's going to take damage over time. And then I've put the um, pain area over this fireplace I've made. Right, so I already have a health variable set up. So what I now want to do is Go back to my blueprints. Uh, my character. 
Uh, no, I don't. Sorry, I want to go to my inventory, back to the designer because I want to add a health bar here. All right. So what I'm going to do is drag in a progress bar. You can make yours look a lot nicer. Obviously, this is just for demonstration. So a progress bar there. Um, I want it to be full, and I want it to be green. That makes more sense for health. And then the percentage here, so this is the thing that makes it go up and down. That's the what I want to bind my health variable to. So I'm going to create another binding and do the same thing I did before. So cast to first person character because that's where the health variable is stored. Get player character. Get health. And hook that up to there compile. Great. Um, I know what I haven't done. <clears throat> Back to the designer. I always forget this. Anchor that bottom left. That's fine. Push play. Okay, so there we go. I've got my health bar there. You can see it. Um, so let's go and pick up some herbs. There we go. Got three of those. I'm going to go and stand in the fire. Uh, like an idiot and I'm going to lose some health. You can see that the health is going down because I've set up that damage over time area. And there we go. So I'm going to come over here and then now what I want to do is be able to um, obviously push the Q key and to use those herbs that I've created to fill the health back up. Okay so that's the next thing. Um, so I need to go back to my blueprints. I need to go to, uh, I want to go to the character. Yeah. So what I want is I need a new action mapping for that Q key, don't I, first of all. So I'm going to go edit project settings uh, to inputs. Um, and you can see I, I've already set that one up. So I'm going to Delete that, pretend you didn't see that one. <laughs> so we need our, we've got our one there from before, which is interact, which is our E key. So I'm going to create a new one, which is going to be use item. You can call this whatever you want, but I'm going to call it use item. I'm going to call it use item med because it's um, for like a, or med, yeah, med, medicine. Uh, although I'm thinking, because I've got in my game as well, I'm going to call this kind of antidote thing. I'll call that antidote. <laughs> but again, it doesn't matter what you call it, whatever you want. And it's the Q key that I've used. So there's the Q key on the keyboard. Don't need to push shift or anything with it. That's fine. Great. So now in my blueprints, this is my character blueprint. Do I want this in my character? Just thinking because. If you remember in the previous video, um, we had to enable inputs for the actor. The character has inputs enabled all the time, so I don't want the, the player to just be able to spam Q. Um, actually, no. Let's just try. Let's just try. <laughs> so, yeah, so if we want to right click in the player character, and we're going to um, type in use item med okay which is the event for pushing that button that we just did the action mapping for so when that's pressed um, we want to set our health to plus whatever the current health is, plus 0.2 or something. Okay, that's how much health the herbs are going to give me. Um, I also want to set the mint, so that's those herbs, to uh, minus the current amount by 1. Okay, so it's going to increase my health and minus the amount of mints that I have stored. Um, but I don't want them to be able to do this 
you know, just keep on spamming it. So I'm going to have to put in a condition. So branch, the condition is going to need to be on the amount of mints that I have being greater than one. So I'm going to type in equals, and we've got greater or equal to here. That's going to be based on the mints. So plug that into there and put a one there. Right, so hopefully this makes sense. So when I push this button, which is the Q key, because it's action mapped to use item med, it's going to say, okay, do you have one or more mints? If so, it's going to add health and take one of those away. If that's false and you don't have one or more, so you have zero, then it won't let you do anything. Okay, so the player shouldn't be able to just spam Q um, and raise health endlessly because we have this condition. All right, let's check it. So push play. Pick up some herbs. Stand here and lose health. Obviously your game, you know, you'd have more things going on where you would lose health rather than just standing in fire. There we go, let's lose a bunch of health. Great, it's going to stand over here again. So I've stopped losing health now. Um, and if I push Q, boom, there you go. So see the health jumped up and the number went down to two. Push Q again, health has jumped up, number's gone down to one. Again, it's gone down to zero. But if I keep pushing Q, notice now that um, my health isn't going up. Nothing's happening because I've run out of herbs. Okay. So that's just about everything. Um, what I may do is I'll do, I'll do a, a, another follow-on video to add on some more things to, um, to this inventory. I've got a thing for ammo there and a thing for um, like a kind of antidote, which I can add on to this bar to add on a few more things. So we'll do that in a separate video, but I think that is all for now. Hopefully that helped. See you next time.